Welcome to another episode of the Good Talk Podcast, where we remind you of the joy of life, the love of God, and the possibilities that lie ahead. My name is Pete Wilson, and I'm joined by my wife, Jordan Wilson. You were a little hesitant there. I was try- I always. I don't know whether to say by my wife, with yeah, I'm my joined- wife. I'm joined with my wife. I'm sure. joined by my. I think yeah. At this point, people know I'm your wife, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not the wife; it's the buyer, I know, the with. I know. Yeah, no, I, I think it can be either. Okay. Continue. Well, I'm either way, I'm glad you're here by my side. <laughs> Me too. Yes, so this happy. is episode eight, correct? Yeah, episode eight. And it's called An Inspiring Lesson I Learned from My Teenage Son. I'm intrigued. It's, I, it's, this is a great one because my 16-year-old son and four of his friends are going to be on the podcast today. Yeah, it, I'm pretty pumped about it. We... Uh, He's been wanting to be on it for a little while, and we we were like, we'll find an angle, I'm sure, and we finally did, so I'm we excited. Did. But before we get to that, we have some other exciting yeah, things. Yeah, we had a good week. It's been an awesome week. So we announced last week for the first time, right, uh, the Dream Year. Uh, two weeks ago, we two announced weeks ago. Dream Year. Okay, we yeah. announced Dream Year two weeks ago, and uh, it filled up in a week. Yeah. 20 people. I, so I wanted to limit it to 20 people because I wanted it to be a real custom experience, not like a large group. I want to have plenty of time for people to ask questions and get input on their dreams and their goals. Mm-hmm. And the whole idea of Dream Year was let's invite a group of people, a small group of people, to uh, engage together on their dreams and their goals. I'm going to give monthly teachings uh, about some of the things that hold us back from achieving our goals and dreams. We're going to do monthly calls together coaching. for yeah. accountability and for coaching. And then we're going to have a private Facebook group. I'll be honest with you. I did not think we'd get 20 people. That, I had all the belief in the world that you'd get 20 people for this. Um, I think it's such an incredible thing. I did not think it'd be this quick um, to be honest. And so we're just yeah, super sign ups were only excited. open for, we announced it two weeks ago, but signups were only open for like a week, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm in a weird spot because first of all, I forgot to close it off. So we're actually, we're at 21 and I promised 20. <laughs> well, at the time of this recording, we're at 21. Yes. At the There's time of the recording, by that point, it could yeah. be larger. So, uh, I forgot to shut the thing off. So I'm already broken my promise and I'm at 21. So I've spent the last couple of days thinking about this. And I've evaluated my time commitments for 2021. And I think what I've, like, I, first of all, I'm inspired. I'm so inspired that people have this many goals and dreams yeah. and want to engage in this. So I'm also, though, committed to keeping it, limiting it to 20, no more than 20 people in a group. Because mm-hmm. I think that's what it's going to take for the dynamics to work. Yeah. So I think what I'm going to do is open it up, reopen it up. And I'm going to do two groups of 15. Mm -hmm. So right now I've got 14 spots left to do that. So I'm going to do two groups of 15. That gives us 14 more slots for the people who want to do this. And again, I'm really inspired. Like I just, I'm so excited that there's people who want to chase after these dreams and these goals. And I really believe in Dream Year. I've, I've spent months now researching this and putting this together. And then obviously years of experience of setting goals and chasing after dreams, and I really believe in this. I think this program works because it really addresses what I think are three of the most common mistakes that people make when they're chasing after their dreams. Mm-hmm. Number one, they try to be quiet about a goal because they're afraid of failure. Sure. Uh, and so they try to be quiet and not tell anybody. I think a huge important part of this dream year experience is you're going public mm-hmm. with your dream year goal. Yep. The second thing, mistake that people make, is they try to accomplish it on their own. Mm-hmm. That's uh, Listen, I cannot tell you how many times I've tried to chase after a goal or a dream by myself and it almost always falls apart. Yeah. God has always used community to confront my desire to give up. And part of what Dream Year is, is you're with a group of people. There's a little bit of social peer pressure, some yeah. accountability, some Absolutely. inspiration happening there. And that's an important part of it. And then the third, I think, most common reason that people don't achieve their goals and their dreams is they try to figure it all out before they get started. That's me. 100% that's it paralyzes people. Yeah. And so what's been so encouraging, I've had so many of you reach out and say, hey, Pete, I don't know that I have exactly what my goal or dream is for 2021. Can I still be a part of this? And my answer has been absolutely yes. Mm-hmm. You have to start somewhere. And maybe somewhere is you just making a declaration that you want 2021 to be better than 2020. Right. And that's all you got. Yep. All you got is you know next year has to be better than this year. And then what we're going to do, that's why I made the program a year long. Mm -hmm. We have a year Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. to dig into your passions. We have a year to dig into your skills to figure out what are some of the goals and passions and dreams that you want to chase after. Yeah. And I think, you know, that whole sentiment of you are the sum of the people that you surround yourself by. And I think that's such a cool experience if you're not in that place or you know exactly what, what you want to do. What better way than to be inspired than to surround yourself with a bunch of dreamers who are in this energized, inspired state? It's just like magnetic. And I feel like that's going to be a really cool outcome there, too. And we're going to chase after those dreams and goals together. So anyway, at the time of this recording, 14 slots, I don't know where Mm -hmm. it will be at yeah. You know, a couple of days from now, but uh, I'm really excited. So if you're at all interested, just go to theplaceforgood.com. You click on Dream Year. There have been a lot of people that have reached out with questions, um, and Pete is really quick to respond to those. So if you have questions before you want to sign up, um, feel free to fill out the contact form there. We've had people give them as gifts, like we had a dad give his daughter that was as so a cool. gift. Um, so there's just been a, a lot of really cool, um, what a great gift to yeah, give somebody. Like, I, I believe in you enough and I believe enough in your goals and your dreams that I'm going to pay for you to be a yeah, part of this. That was so cool. That's so awesome. I love that. Um, we also kicked off give good. Yes. Um, you guys were so generous. Oh my Thank gosh. you so much. Hundreds and hundreds of dollars yeah. at the time of this recording. Again, it's still coming <laughs> in so we can't say the amount. Yeah, exactly. We know the family now. Yeah. We've picked the family. Y'all, it is just going to be a really uh, cool story. So I'm excited. Um, we're going to like tell you guys the story, the amount that we've raised, all of that very soon. Um, so Hopefully stay next tuned week, for right? that. Yep. And yep. so um, we will just, we're just excited. So we're, yeah. we're ready and to get thank going. thank you guys yeah, thank for you. your generosity. So cool Yeah. that you guys would reach out in that kind of way and just be so generous. I know there's a lot, there's a lot of needs this time of year, especially yeah. in 2020. And so I think it's really cool that you guys have come together as a community to to just bless this family. So yeah. it's awesome. I do love this time of year. I know. It, we both do. I, I will say there's one thing. I'm, it's getting a little old for me. Oh, gosh. The Hallmark Christmas movies, Jordan. I got to bring it up because I'm, I, I'm, I'm Mr. Christmas, but... We've watched to date at least 30 of these Christmas Hallmark movies. We added it as an addition. We have like multiple Hallmark stations that are playing this. There's like a Hallmark mystery channel. Well, but during Christmas, it's just Hallmark Christmas. And so we have all these. They, okay. We had to buy a subscription to this like platform that shows Hallmark. We have yeah. um, our TV server. We use um, YouTube TV and we don't have a Hallmark. Yep. So we had to purchase that, which you were on board with. I by was. The way. No, I, I, I um, like it. It's my problem comes in that all these movies are exactly the same. It's okay. the exact same thing. It's it's they they've got a job opportunity, um, and but like they're gonna have to. No, it's leave. like the corporate versus back home, and your family is tied into it. Or they and see you their know, high school you sweetheart. know, in the first ninety seconds, I know the rest of the entire That's movie. Okay. You're like, oh, this dude right here has been brought in to revive this girl's candy business. <laughs> they hate each other, but they are about to. Uh, get together he's gonna save the candy business he's gonna move there they're gonna get married they're gonna have six kids like it's every one of them is the same being attacked okay so maybe they're the same i am going to steal a line that somebody said to you lately because you also harassed me on social media (laughs) for my love for hallmark movies and this one woman i love her and she's gonna be my friend now she said it's the same as a football game Mm. Right, so like every, all football all games, football are, games the same. are kind of the same. The goals the same. Yeah, you know someone's gonna win. You don't know who. Listen, I, players, I'm a football yeah. fan. I'm a huge football fan, so I'm not like digging football. I think it's different. But it just comes down time, to whatever entertains you, I guess. Yeah, and at this time of year, I want happy. I want predictable. I just want to feel like Christmas. Yeah, there's no stress watching a Hallmark movie that this might go bad or they might die or they may not get together or yeah. Christmas may not happen. Right. Their business is going to survive. They are going to yeah. get married. Uh, it's going to end positive. In 2020, why do we need anything else? All right. Thank you you're, for your attacks. You're convincing me slowly but surely. All right. Uh, so <laughs> Get into the actual meat of this podcast thanks for, now. Yeah, let's get into the meat of it. Okay. Thanks for letting me kind of just sure. spew on the Hallmark thing. Okay. So I'm excited about today. We're talking about something that, uh, ooh, wow. To be honest, I'm really nervous to even bring this up. I, I, I try not to teach on things until I feel like, definitely not until I've mastered it because I've rarely ever mastered anything I've taught on. But I at least usually have a general understanding of the things that yeah, I teach. You've studied on. it for a while. This yeah. one, not so much. This is something really fresh that I've been reading and listening about, and it's been so eye-opening. And I'm afraid I'm going to butcher it. <laughs> uh, but 
it's just really relevant to my life right now when I talk about this. Mm -hmm. And I've been studying and listening about these. Some people call it levels of consciousness. Some people call it spiral dynamics, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're doing a very, very, very elementary level discussion on this, right? So mm -hmm. don't you don't have to take... email me and say it's a lot more complicated than this. There's more stages and more levels. I I know all that. Yeah. It for, would take ten episodes to dig would. into this fully. But, but for our purposes, for this podcast, th there, there's these different models out there. Again, what you call it, levels of consciousness or spiral dynamics. Essentially, what it's doing is explaining how it is that we as human beings grow and develop. Mm -hmm. And we tend to all pass through different levels of consciousness. We, we, we pass through these different levels of development, these milestones, and we retain what we learned in each stage, but uh, we're adding new understanding as we progress. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you the most basic form of this. There's really about nine different levels, but for our conversation, we're going to talk about three levels. Yeah. There's what people call stage one or level one. This would be uh, a lot of people call this egocentric. Uh, the idea here is this is where your morality is centered on me. I am connected to myself, mm -hmm. right? So this usually happens for most people in a healthy environment. This is happening early on in your life. When you're five and you're six, when your dad told you, Jordan, you're pretty. Um, when my dad, uh, you know, told me, Pete, you are a great baseball player. Like, mm -hmm. was I really? I mean, I don't know. I hit the ball. Like, that's great. But when he said, you're a great baseball player, he's, he's helping me form my ego. He's mm -hmm. helping me believe in me. Mm -hmm. And for a number of years, that's really all you think about. Oh, yeah. Until it's yourself. a while, yeah. But that stage, wow, so important. Because I know people who didn't get what they needed in the egocentric stage, and they didn't have a mom or a dad who believed in them and spoke words of affirmation over mm -hmm. them, and they spent the rest of their life desperately looking for those things. Yeah. So there's that stage one, egocentric. Stage two is called tribe-centric. And uh, if stage one is centered on me, stage two is centered on us, right? And I ideally here, uh, your identity has expanded to include other human beings inside of a group that are like you that are like you so mm -hmm. uh, this is often picked up tribe centric is, is often uh, picked up this level when you go into youth sports like i know you were a big soccer player when you started to play soccer all of a sudden you had a set of rules that you had to follow mm -hmm. in soccer you had a coach that you had to follow their instruction you had other team members where you couldn't just think about yourself but you had to think about yourself inside the dynamics of a team yeah you had like a unified goal right Right. Yeah. So you're not just connected to yourself. You're connected to others. Mm -hmm. So it picks up a lot of new sports. Um, this happens in religion. You're mm -hmm. a part of a group, a tribe. There's a set of rules or a set of things that we say, we don't say, a way that we behave, a way we don't behave. Um, you know, Boy Scouts. You know, again, a big thing around tribe centric is learning a set of rules that are for the betterment of the group. Right. It's not just about you. Mm -hmm. um, you learn to be a part of something that's bigger than you. Um, and a big part of this is that you understand or you start to believe that in your tribe, that your story, your mission, your beliefs are right and other tribes are wrong. Yeah. Okay. That's mm -hmm. a big part of being tribes. Your soccer team is better than their soccer team. And you had a list of reasons why. When you were in your sorority in college, your sorority was the best sorority. I teach you about this all the time. I know. <laughs> You were, you were going to get in so much trouble after this podcast. Her sorority won all kinds of awards, and they were the best sorority ever no, in the history right. of America. But, but you, you get my point. You're part of a tribe. We do it right. We believe right. We think right. All of that, right? I grew up Baptist. We thought we did it right as Baptists. The Methodists, they did it wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, or I, you know, go to church. This group of people does not go to church. Yes. I am better than X group, you know. Yeah, I, you know, I grew up uh, a Republican, and I thought that Democrats were not only wrong politically. I thought that they were just wrong as people. That they were evil. That's like how I grew up, like understanding my tribe, uh, but not being accepting or even understanding of another tribe. So that's tribe centric. We could stay there forever, but. Uh, and again, there's there's health and unhealth at every stage. Yeah, yeah. Every stage. Um, the third level, though, is called world-centric. And this is where my identity expands again. 
And this time it moves from us to all of us, or it moves from we, like us in this tribe, to everyone. So now I have care and compassion, not just for myself, that's egocentric, not just for my family or my tribe or my nation, that's tribe-centric, but for all of humanity. Mm -hmm. Men and women everywhere, regardless of race, color, sex, creed, that, that's what world-centric is is all about it's moving towards like inclusion now the goal and this is why this is just so fascinating i know some of you are listening to this you're like can we just go back to talking about hallmark movies but or what's but the hear point? me out the goal of understanding these different stages or levels isn't so that you can compare and judge and say oh i'm in stage three you're in stage two right. it's about understanding more about yourself and the people around you in your world and this has been a real light bulb moment for me in understanding more about these stages, I'm understanding more about people. I'm understanding more about why certain people say the things that they say, why they believe the way they believe, why they vote the way they vote, why they protest the way they protest. So I'm just kind of new to learning all this. And as I mentioned, my 16-year-old son, Gage, and his friends have been begging to get on the podcast, and we've been looking for an angle. And so I actually started seeing this model applied to their life. Mm -hmm. And I realized that they were actually teaching me some really important lessons about how human beings grow. Mm -hmm. And we thought, heck, let's do it. Let's bring them on. I'm going to try to teach <laughs> this material, this spiral dynamics level of consciousness to a group of 16-year-olds at their level. Mm -hmm. But even in doing that, I feel like I learned some really important things. Yeah, and have some grace for the audio. Um yeah. <laughs> Passing mics was a bit of a mess, but I think uh, it'll be helpful and just fun. It's a fun application. Um, it was fun to watch. I got to watch behind the camera. Yeah. So, so without further ado, here's my 16-year-old son, Gage, and his buddies as we talk about life. All right, y'all. I've been so excited about this. I've been waiting a long time for this day, this moment, to have the four of you guys on the podcast. This is awesome. Uh, I have my son, Gage. And three of his friends. Hey, let's go around real quick. Introduce yourselves. I'm Gage. I'm Brody. I'm Myers. I'm Gavin. Gavin. All right, man. I'm, I'm so I'm excited about this. I've been we've been talking for a while about having you on the podcast, trying to figure out like what's the angle, and um, I I think I have it because I've been doing it. This won't interest you guys at all. So just pretend like you're interested for a second, okay? But. Um, I've been studying like these kind of, they call it levels of consciousness, but it's about how humans grow. How, how does they develop? How does they transform? Which is important because, I mean, learning is important, but transformation is essential. And I, I, I so see, and this is a very elementary discussion on these stages, but I so see you guys and where you are in these stages. And I think it's really cool. And so stage one, is some people call this like the me stage. It's the egocentric stage. This is a stage where um, you're you're developing your ego. You're starting to believe in yourself, but it's but it's all about you, That's right? Engage plays matter. Yes. Really so, yeah. So in the egocentric stage would be like Gage when uh, I used to as a when you were little. I'd let you win at different games like basketball. Do you remember that? You let me win. I let you win. Oh. You don't know this, but like when you were little, I'd let you win. I'd pretend like I, you know, was worse than I was. And so, but it was all about me saying, hey, you're, you're a great basketball player. You're, you're a great athlete. Brody, I bet when you were little, your parents all the time were like, you can sing, man. You're great. Like, you're awesome. And like, so all of you, I like, why they lied to you, but. That, <laughs> that first stage is that egocentric stage. And then you get to what people call, it's me, and then some people call the second stage, we. Uh, but it's tribe centric. So this is where you start to be a part of a tribe. Okay. And it's really clear for me. And we're going to talk about the different tribes y'all are a part of in a second, but you have these different tribes and inside of a tribe, you're starting to learn really important things like rules, how to get along with other people, but it's a big part of your development. You don't, when you left the egocentric stage, the me stage, you didn't leave all that, what you learned there behind. You brought that in with you. That's why you were able to try out for sports. That's why, Brody, you were able to pick up a mic and sing. Like, you, your ego was developed. So you have that you have that kind of individualistic, kind of egocentric stage, and you have this tribe-centric, and then you have the world-centric. And that's where you start to actually believe and understand that everyone's important, not just the people that are inside of your particular tribe. So in the egocentric, 
This is where you're connected to yourself. Tribe-centric is where you're connected to people who are like you. And then world-centric is where you start to connect to everyone. And that's where I start seeing you guys kind of transition in that world-centric. And I think it's so cool. All right, so let's back up and we'll talk a little bit about this. Gage, tell me about your tribe. Tell me about what you're into these days and, and what you're doing. Um, well, most of what I do is go to school and play football, but like right now football is over and we're on online school. So I've been pretty bored lately. Yeah. But in, but when you guys were playing, you, I mean, your team did a lot better than anybody expected. Yeah. When you guys made it to what was third round yeah. of the state finals, which was awesome. So you have this tribe, these guys you play football with, you guys are working out pretty much every day, almost year round now, right? Yeah. A lot because we're doing winter workouts now, and our season just now ended. Can you uh, can you bench a lot? No, do you think you can bench more than me? Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. You can, all right. So, Brody, let's talk for a second. Tell me about your tribe, what you're into these days. All right, so I do online school, I used to go to school with all of them, but now I do online school by myself, and it's really boring. But I do music with my brother, we're in a duo. And What's the name of your duo? We're CB30. CB30. <laughs> and and let's let's go ahead. Let's uh, you're going to be really humble, so I'll I'll brag on you. I mean, you guys kind of crushing it. You guys have opened for Luke Bryan. Yes. You uh how many TikTok followers do you have? 2.1 mil. 2.1 million people following you on TikTok? Yes. Oh, wow. Let's go. Man. That's crazy. Thank you. I mean, do you think you're really good at TikTok? Is that why? No. Cuz cuz <laughs> You just have to post a bunch of things, and the stupid stuff goes viral. Wow. Dude, that's crazy. All right, so that's that's your deal. Like, you're in the music world. That's kind of your tribe. You have your people. You have management. You have other people you're singing with, and you collaborate with, and all that great stuff. Yeah. Okay, all right, let's keep going. Myers. Um, I play uh, baseball and basketball for the school. Yeah. I'm just doing that, like, Which do you like more, baseball or basketball? I like both, but... Probably basketball right now. Yeah. I'd say I'm more focused on, for sure. You think you got a chance to play beyond high school? I don't know. We'll see. We have another three years to work at it, so we'll see. Yep. That's a lot of – playing two sports in high school is a lot of work. Mm-hmm. So you kind of have both those tribes there. You're kind of in the middle of that, working out with them, practicing with them, doing all that crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I love it. And then we got Gavin. Gavin, what's your deal, man? Uh, I play hockey and lacrosse for my school. That's awesome. Yeah. I lo- How did you get into hockey? Big hockey guy. My brother plays it. Really? Yeah. He's played brother, his whole life. Yeah, brother goes to Boston to play. Your brother plays for Boston? No, he, no, he, he goes to a high school there. Like okay, all right. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. So he's like really, really good. Yeah, so I just kind of picked it up after him. I love That's that, awesome. dude. I had no, I, I mean, I knew you played hockey, but I didn't know you were like that into it. Uh, it's kind of like Franklin hockey's kind of like a joke. It's all about, it's all about hitting. <laughs> it's all about the fights. Well, hopefully your coach isn't isn't listening to the podcast. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. <laughs> I love it. All right. Okay, so that's good. So here's what I think is cool. When you think about these different stages of like transformation, you you have again, you guys have been through the whole egocentric, you're obviously have your tribe centric. But one of the things I think is so neat and unique about you guys, and obviously get the chance to kind of watch you all and kind of watch how you do life and how you're kind of going through high school and all that, I think it's super cool. And you guys may not think this is cool. I think it's super cool that even though you're all part of different tribes and kind of doing your own thing, I feel like you're transitioning from that tribe-centric to that world-centric in this particular season of your life where you're starting to understand that all these tribes are important. See, when I, I feel like when I was in high school, you had your tribe and that was it. Like, you know, the jocks hung out with the jocks and the nerds hung out with the nerds. And these groups didn't, you know, and the hippie, like, kids were kind of, you know, you and I know that you have all those tribes at your school. Um, what are the tribes? Like, Besides jocks, which you guys would kind of all be fall into the. I feel like they're all kind of mixed yeah, up. There's like there's like skaters and yeah, e- like emos. What's like, an emo? Like kind of like goth kind of. Oh, goth, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's really like only three. I would put it in like, I I don't know. How I'd say it. I would put it as like jocks, yeah. nerds, and then like emos. Yeah. 
If if so, if I were in your high school, Bro, nerd, 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 what would I be? Nerd. <laughs> There's no 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 question nerd, about it. Nerd yeah, nerd no, or emo? I, I would have been emo. What do do? Does anybody in high school wear skinny jeans at all? Yeah, uh, that's why you would be in the nerd category. For the sure. nerds wear skinny jeans. <laughs> oh, I don't think anyone wears skinny jeans, but that's like. I, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you have your different tribes, but again, I want to go back to this. What I think is so cool is I've watched you guys now for years support each other in your different things. Like, I've been at a football game, Gage, you know, watching you play, and I've seen Brody and Myers show up. I've seen Gavin there just, like, cheering you on. Every once in a while, Gavin might come. Yeah, yeah but Gavin but I think it's cool. And I've I've seen Brody before when you were actually – I think you were online doing some launch of a song or something – Everybody's standing here in the kitchen. We're all oh, around a computer. Your song came out, and oh, you were on live, and me, Blake, and Jay were all down here. Oh, yeah. yeah, and we're all watching you, and like just so proud of of what you're doing. Like I've seen all of you guys support each other. What is what drives that? I mean, why why do you guys do that instead of just staying inside of your own little tribe? Uh, well, know. we are like a we are like a tribe ourselves. Right. So you got your own little tribe inside of those different tribes. Yeah. Well yeah. I feel like just like supporting each other is like important. Yeah. It's like better as a group. Yeah. Does it give you, uh, do y'all get nervous when you see each other show up at your stuff? Or like, Brody, if, if these guys show up at, at some singer-songwriter thing that you're doing, like, does that make you nervous? Yeah. I mean, because they don't really like see me in that zone. Yeah, thank you. Uh, they don't really like ever see me in that zone because I'm always like, working like at my house like with that stuff with my brother and then like they never really hear me sing even though I've been friends with them for like four years so it's like weird to kind of see them see me do that you'd start laughing yeah and if I make eye contact with them I'll laugh so yeah yeah it's kind of nerve-wracking yeah no I totally get that but I, I love it because I, th I think it gives you each get confidence from each other by the way that you support each other and I and I just think I think that's really cool and I, I love that there's I think it's so important, and I, I hope you guys don't lose this, because I think the, when you get older, I see this all the time with adults, instead of celebrating each other's success, uh, we tend to, you see somebody else's success, and you're like, eh, like, it, you kind of internalize that, you kind of get jealous of that, you don't tend to support each other quite as much, and I, I think that whenever you're chasing a goal or a dream, one of the most important things you can do is to cheer on the goals and dreams of the people around you. Yeah. And in doing that, you actually become more successful yourself. And uh, for some reason, a lot of times as adults, we lose that and we become extremely competitive against each other. And we think somebody else's success somehow equates to our failure when that's not the case at all. So I... I just love watching you guys cheer each other on in your different things. I think it's really important. I saw this quote this week. Uh, there's a guy, you probably don't know who Jordan Peterson is, do you? He, he's a really cool dude. But anyway, he said this. He says, here's how you know if someone's your friend. When you tell them bad news, they listen. When something good happens to you, they'll celebrate. And I thought that is the most like basic definition of what friendship's about. Like I think when you guys have a hard time, you should be able to share that with each other and you listen. And when somebody has a success, when you guys go far in the basketball tournament this year, I think all your buddies should be around you, like cheering you on. And when you guys went to state, I think everybody was cheering you on. And when you release a single and it goes huge, like everybody should be cheering you on. And Gavin, when you end up moving to Canada and like go with, like we're gonna be cheering you on. And I, I just, I think that's really cool that you guys do that. So anyway, that's, I, I thank you. For entertaining me, I, as I'm learning this stuff, it's fun to kind of see how you guys are kind of living this out. And you're an inspiration to me. I think you'll be an inspiration to a lot of people because we need to be reminded to cheer other people on that are outside of our own tribe and whatever goals, dreams that they're having. Um, so thanks for inspiring me. Of course. Thanks for having us. It's awesome. All right. Oh, I almost forgot. Gage, we have four questions Ooh. for you. All right, I'm ready. Four questions. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Question number one: What's your favorite hobby? Mm. Sleeping. Uh, yeah, probably napping. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's probably football. Football. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, question number two: uh, How do you feel about being the middle 
son. Oh, you me have and, an older brother and a younger brother. Yeah, me, me and Myers know that it's just the worst situation you can be in. Really? Oh, uh, no, no. You're not uh, loved the same, I, Myers? I wouldn't say that, but like, you know that like your youngest brother and your older brother are always going to team up on you because you're just in so between. Just in the center. Yeah, so it's basically like the worst situation you could be in. Okay, <laughs> we're going to work on that. Now, question <laughs> number three, uh, what do you want to be known for? Like when people kind of look back on your life, what do you want to be known for? Um, I don't know. A legend. Yeah, a legend. And what? Like what? Like when people, you know, reflect back on you. Yeah, you're, you got all your brothers are up here on the staircase making fun of you. I know it's a lot of pressure. What do you want to be known for? Um, probably for being like super rich. <laughs> okay, that's fair. All right. Hey, question number four, last one. Uh, what gives you hope? Probably just all my buddies supporting me. Probably. There you go. I think that's I think that is a great answer. Hey, good job on four questions. Thank you. All right, hey, thanks guys. That was fun. Great. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right out of the mouth of babes. Oh my gosh. That was great. Oh, it's crazy. It might be really entertaining for us because we know all of them very well. So, but yeah, it's very entertaining. It was kind of entertaining. I'm just wondering how absolutely confused everybody is right now that's <laughs> listening or watching to this. They're never listening again. They're like, no, what no, are you doing? Like this is truly though, I'm serious. This is the danger of trying to teach something that you're in the process of learning yourself. It's really hard to explain something that's still a little bit foggy in your own mind, mm. but you're excited and passionate about it. Um but you know what, I, I think, first of all, this stuff fascinates me, these levels of growth and how it is that people grow. I think it's important to understand that. But um, I think the boys are on the right track. And it was really cool for me to be able to sit down with them. Like you said, I, I've known most of these, these guys since they were in kindergarten. And um, they're on the right track. I love the way that they're supporting each other and each other's goals. And in their own 16-year-old way, what you're seeing is they are transitioning from tribe centric where they have their group, their rules, their set of clothes to understanding world centric. Now I'll say this, their world is still very small, mm -hmm. but that transition is going to set them up very well for as their world continues to, to expand. Grow. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I don't know. I, I just think again, they're on the right track. The two biggest reminders I got out of that conversation are number one, the best way to accomplish your own personal goals is to get behind and cheerlead somebody else in their goals. I don't know why that dynamic works, but it does. Mm -hmm. Oh, it does. And yeah. when I cannot just be stuck in me centric and my goals and my agenda, but I begin to get behind other people in my tribe and then other people in the world who are outside of my tribe, and I'm helping, you know, them for the betterment of their own life and the pursuit of their own goals and dreams, it does nothing but help me achieve my own. Yep. So that was a huge reminder. And the second thing was that the path towards growth almost always includes expanding your circle of love and acceptance. Mm -hmm. So if you want to continue to grow as a human being, it's almost always in the direction of expanding the love and the acceptance that you have for people. Mm -hmm. Growth is always a move from ego to tribe to world. And again, it's not that you leave ego behind you take what you learn in that ego season right and that allows you to be a part of a tribe which then allows you to be a part of something that you know believes in those outside of the tribe so you're taking what you're learning at each level but you're not stopping and you're moving more towards inclusion and i could use a lot of different examples and a lot of different leaders to show you how this works I, but i think probably the most common for our listeners i know not everyone here would say that they're part of the christian faith but i know a, a, quite a few are we could use the example of jesus jesus is born to a very specific tribe right mm -hmm. the jewish people and inside of that jewish tribe they had a lot of rules about what's right and what's wrong. They had thoughts about who mattered and who didn't matter, right? They had thoughts about who's good and who's evil. Now, Jesus in his life, did he double down on the tribe-centric attitude and rules and regulations, or did he help to transition everybody he came in contact with from tribe-centric to world-centric? And the answer, obviously, is that he transitioned them towards world-centric. He transitioned them towards being more inclusive. Um, his tribe, the Jewish culture, they hated tax collectors, right? They hated tax collectors. They viewed tax collectors as people who had sold out, 
connected with the Roman government and were taking advantage of the Jewish people. Mm-hmm. What did Jesus do? Did he say, yeah, you're right, down with the tax collectors? No. He takes a tax collector, Matthew, and invites him to be part of his inner group, to be a part of his inner tribe, right? And the Jewish culture that Jesus was immersed in inside of that tribe, they all hated Samaritans. They hated Samaritans so much that they would not go through Samaria. They would travel a much longer distance around Samaria so they would not have to come in contact with a Samaritan. What did Jesus do? Did he double down on that attitude? No. He goes right through Samaria. Not only does he go through Samaria, he stops and he has a conversation with a Samaritan woman. And he reminds her of her purpose and her dignity despite her past. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. He's always moving people towards inclusion. Uh, in Jesus' tribe, the Jewish people looked at lepers with a tremendous amount of disdain. They, did, they thought they were dirty. They thought they were unclean, not just physically, but also spiritually. What does Jesus do? He's like, ah, yeah, I don't actually believe that. We're going to include the lepers. I'm going to heal the lepers. I'm not afraid to touch a leper. It's like at every step of the way, he's moving people from tribe-centric to world-centric. It's, and it's a process, right? But that's oh, yeah. part of that transformation and so i would say and some people will take this controversial but i would say whatever faith system or religious system you're a part of if it's leading you to constantly put people in categories where you look at them as they're good or they're bad or categories of people you should avoid or categories of people that you should condemn you might really want to question that faith system yep if jesus taught inclusion and you're living exclusion yeah seems a little The direction of growth is always towards inclusion. And we'll come back to this one day, but this has been really helpful for me. Again, not not to use to judge people or to put people in Mm -hmm. categories, but just to understand why we think the way we think and feel the way we feel and say the things we say. And why other people think the way they think. I think that's a huge help. Like It's like personality tests where you're like, oh, this is their personality type, so this is why they're acting this way. Yes, It removes all your own baggage, and now you're like, no, they're acting like this because this is you know, where they are in their growth. And it takes out the like resentment and anger. It, it just, does. It, you know, we've talked about that several episodes ago when we were talking about forgiveness mm-hmm. is that, you know, when you they put, know not what they've done. Yeah. No, not what they've done. It's, it's a, it's that they don't understand. And for me, what I've found myself so often doing like when people says, people say something that seems a little crazy or, you know, they get stuck on an issue and they can't move on. For me, I find myself just saying, of course, of course they think that way. Of course they get angry about that. Of course. Now, now I get it. Like I have a deeper understanding of what it is uh, that they're going through and thinking based on what stage they might be in their consciousness. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's really interesting. I feel like we could go on forever about that. <laughs> I could go on forever because I have so many questions about it. So yeah. I, I know I'm, most people have, have more questions now than they do answers. But it's, it's a it's, cool thing to study. Fun. If you're it more is. interested in it, studying it, there's so many levels to it. Um, it's been really cool for us to look through. Yeah, it has. Now, if you want even deeper stuff, oh, man, we have some bonus content this week, Heck don't we? Yeah, we... Um, we could tell the boys weren't done when we were done. So no, they wanted to, they had questions. We flipped the flipped the switch there. So they got to be the interviewers yes. to you. Um, and we and have they just asked a bunch of questions. A bunch of questions. We cover lots of topics. Everything from skinny jeans to <laughs> yeah. coloring your hair yep. to uh, first kiss. Yep. To but all that is bonus material. It's only on YouTube, right? Yeah, it's on our YouTube channel. If you look up our YouTube channel, it's Good Talk with Pete and Jordan Wilson. <laughs> um, we've been posting a little bit of extra things on that channel too. So if you haven't checked it out, there's some co- content. But uh, this might be the most entertaining one you have. So that's fun. Merry Check Christmas. It it's a gift from us to you. You're welcome. Yeah, that's been awesome. Yeah. So much to uh, continue to learn and expand on. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. Yep. All right. Thank you guys so much, as always, for just being a part of this. Uh, Until next week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he smile on you and be gracious to you. May he show you his favor and more than ever give you his peace. Mm